Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed and today we're going to make some background techniques for Inktober. So this is a series of videos I'm going to be doing over the course of in October, random days, just kind of popping in and showing you some fun background or just inking techniques using ink. So hence Inktober. So today we are going to make a really cool swirly background using a stamp block or it could be a laminated piece of paper. It really all works. I like kind of the rigidity of the stamp block. So this is just a little bit of a larger one. And then I am taking my color blocks. This is a Petal Point pigment ink. And I like it because there's got a lot of variety of colors. So as you can see, I already made one here, but it's really, really simple. I'm going to take two complementary colors. So let's do the lighter colors here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some color. Now, if you don't have this particular scenario, any kind of pigment ink would work. It'd be just fine. I like working with two colors instead of trying to do a ton. It just gets a bit messy if you go too many different tones. So I've inked up my stamp block quite a bit. Now I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to move off my other one off the side. And I do have a little bit of a paper towel here. And you come in and saturate it. Now, here's the fun thing. You could go ahead and do it right now. But to get this really cool, and this is what I got here, this kind of swirly effect, this is, it's so super hard. You take your finger and you swirl. And while I'm doing that, I'm getting in to the corners and just kind of swirl. Look how fun. It's just this kind of messy, look at that. So look at all those fun swirlies. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of, this is the Nina paper. It's already cut down to be an A2 size. And I'm going to lay it on here and then just push. Okay, it's going to get a little wet. That's fine. This is just a background paper. And then pull up and look at that. Look at the swirls on this. Now, there are some gaps and stuff, so I can kind of come in here real fast and kind of pick up anywhere where I may have had a little bit of a gap problem. But sometimes they look kind of cool that you've got like these spaces. So that's it. That's super hard. Now, I'm just going to kind of clean off my little block here and so it's just it's a cool way it's another fun way I'm not inventing and this is not anything but it's just a fun way of making a cool background and we are going to turn these into cards it's just a simple stamp sentiment on top of there but let's do another one so let's do green and let's throw that in with a little bit of yellow I'm going to move this off to the side again spray it down get the colors to start moving and swirling around so come in do the swirly motion with your finger and you know the beautiful thing is is that this is just taking a little bit of ink and a little bit of paper and if you don't like it you don't have to use it it's so simple so again come in really get in here and then lift up okay i'm gonna do one this is gonna be pretty let's do a darker tone I'm not sure if I'm liking that too much. So I'm taking this dark blue color and then I'm gonna pull in with this, it almost looks like raspberry and this should be cool. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful of is for instance, I wouldn't want to do blue and red. Why? Because it's the color tones that would make mud and you're gonna get a really bad combination of colors, especially when you swirl it. So come in again get your swirls. So pick colors that will blend. They're close. So on this color wheel, you can kind of tell if you did two colors that were similar or next to each other, but don't go across because that's when you get mud. So that's kind of also why I like this little petal point that I'm working with. All the links and supplies I'm going to be using are going to be down below. So just take a look. So look at that. Oh, look, this has got like gaps and stuff. Look at the swirls. It's just something different. I love it. Okay, so let's do the yellow and the orange next to each other. Let's try these. So it's, again, so easy. And when I pat them down, I'm really being careful to try not to overlap the colors too much so I don't contaminate my um, inks too much. It's going to be a little contamination. Okay, slide this back in. I'm running out of room to store all these and then swirl it up. I am trying to use a different finger each time so I don't pull a color that I've already used and then place it down. And if I get the back dirty, I'm not too worried about it. These are looking so cool so far. Aren't they fun? I love it. And they, they're a little wet, so they're gonna take a little bit of time to dry. So just give it a little bit of time, it'll be fine. If you're noticing, I do have my craft mat down here because I don't want to get everything all wet. So, and then I just have my paper towel roll that's really easy to kind of sop up some of the extra. So, let's go for, ooh, let's do this. This looks like fun. So, let's pull out this gray color. 
and add the gray tone. And let's go back to the green. Spray this up. Well, this will look like camouflage. You can already kind of see it. So swirl, really kind of get in here. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's look how cool these look. Same technique using just the colors that are in here. Let these dry a little bit and then we're going to add a stamp and we're going to map these and turn them into cards. So what I've done now is I've cut all of my background. As you can see, there's the done card right here. Super simple card, very simple. I've cut my backgrounds to fit onto my card base and still have a little bit of that white background. It's just my usual go-to, cut it about a quarter of an inch smaller than the back of the card, which these are an A2 size cards. So then my thought process is let's just make it simple, let the background shine, and I'm going to take you through how to do one, maybe two of these cards. Super simple step is you're going to go through, and I like to ink. So I'm going to ink the edges in black. It gives that illusion that there is another background paper there that is black. So it's just this little hint. And with the darker colors, it's not going to be as obvious. I have also cut down a sheet of white cardstock and I'm going to ink the edge of this in black. And I'm trying to keep it nice and crisp and clean so I don't want to make you know big streaks. It's just that illusion of a black background, almost like there's another sheet of paper in there. Very simple with that. Okay, next step is I picked up this stamp set from Altenew. Um, I may be saying it wrong, Altenew? I was called Altenew. And I've already used one, and I did the Oh Come All You Faithful. These are all various sayings for Christmas. And I like the fact that these aren't like super Christmassy cards, but they are Christmassy, if that makes sense. So any background would work as long as you use a black stamp. Now, the ones I'm using, I can't use this tall one because that doesn't fit, but like this one, the Hark, the Angel, the Marian Bright, um, the King I think is not big enough, and then also the Come All You Faithful. So I'm going to interchange between the Hark, the Angel, the Marian Bright, and the Faithful. So the first step is, is come in and attach my background to my card. So you can make a whole bunch of these background papers and then you can mass produce these cards. So what are these cards going to be used for? Well, every Christmas, this is my second year to do this, I host Christmas card swap. So if you are interested, I have a Facebook group. I will put the link down below so that way you guys can join and we swap Christmas cards. So you send me the Christmas cards in batches of 10 up to 50 cards. They can be exactly the same. They can be different. So this is six of the cards that I'm going to be using to swap with the Chris, you know, with my batch and probably the rest of my Inktober, I'll be making cards. will be going towards my Christmas. I might, I might do something a little different. I'm not going to say that every single Inktober post I do for no October is going to be all about Christmas cards, but there definitely is going to be a batch of them. So I'm going to stamp this real fast pop this in here. I'm just using a black premium dye ink. I need a good strong ink come in. Really make sure this gets a nice good, there we go. I mean if you want to make sure that this is like you can get one of those stamp positioners out, it's your call. I like simplicity right now. Oops. So if I was going to do a whole bunch with the exact same stamp, I probably would, oh I got that messy. That's going to bug me. I did cut one extra. So I really need to have a clean sheet of paper below me. I'm going to get that right now. We all make oopsies and I just made one. I flipped it over and there was a little bit of ink and it got ink on there. And that's just going to bug me because I want these to be nice clean cards. So we're going to redo this. I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to speed through this real fast. All right. So now I'm back up to where I was. And I just did it on my white sheet of paper. So that way I don't get pick up anything I don't want to. When I cut my strip, I actually cut my strip to be a little bit longer than my background paper, but not quite as long as the back of my card. And I like that white, just that pop. I don't like centering my stamp either because I feel like it's everything's just too matchy-matchy, center-center. I also don't like putting the strip right in the center. I like going a little bit down. It's my work little quirky things. I'm also going to pull out some Nuva Drops. I did grab two different colors, but I think I'm leaning more towards the black one, and this is really just called Ebony Black, so I don't think I'm going to use the other one. So I'm just doing a couple of testing drops just off the side to make sure that everything is nice and lined up, and I'm going to do three little drops. I think three looks nice. A pair can sometimes look really good too, but I think for this particular card, I like the trio. And then just kind of tap the back. The Nuva Drops do a really good job of doming and keeping that shape. And as you can see, this is kind of the gist for our card. So 
these are going to go into my Christmas card swap. If you are interested, like I said, the link is down below. Links for all the supplies, and I will be finishing these cards just off camera. You don't need to see me do the same thing over and over. It's the same card, changing up stamps. You'll see pictures here in a minute. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe, and also hit that bell button. That means that you would like to get notifications for future videos, especially for the rest of my Inktober videos. I'll see you guys again later. Bye-bye.